I'm Jessica Rodriguez. I am married to George Fallon, and we live here in Bloomfield. So I was originally born in uh, Guayaquil, Ecuador. Um, I came when I was two years old to New Jersey. Um, my mom is Susie Goldiver, uh, my dad, Manuel Rodriguez. Uh, my stepfather is Jeff Goldiver. I two younger sisters and a younger brother as well. But I lived for those first two years in Ecuador uh, with my grandparents, my mom's uh, mom and dad. My parents got married when I was about two years old and I uh, had a little brother when I was about three. You know, everything was fine. Like, I really love my little brother. Uh, he's really, I still love him to this day. He's probably the one of my best friends. You know, I went to Catholic school. Um, you know, I grew up in church for the most part. Um, it was a really big part of our lives spiritually. Not necessarily going to church, but just being um, or knowing of God. Um, we moved a lot as I was growing up. Um, you know, I moved from town to town. Um, just with my family for whatever reasons we were moving around. You know, I had a lot of bumps in the road, a lot of obstacles when I was really young. Um, I questioned a lot about myself and who I was. Um, I question it maybe in unhealthy ways, like, you know, society tells us like, was I thin enough? Was I pretty enough? Um, did people like me? What could I do to make people like me? Um, and that was really hard. And I started asking myself those questions at like seven years old. After that, you know, I found out that who I thought was my dad was really not my biological father, but he was more of my adopted father. So, um, you know, that was a really big shock. Also, you know, a lot of these things kind of came at me at a really young age. I was only nine when I found out about that. Um, my mom wanted to be honest and just let me know the truth before I found out somewhere else. And, you know, um, a lot of those things led me to make really unwise decisions. You know, I, I put a lot of my life's control in other people's hands. I look to men for self-esteem and self-confidence, and, and that was from, from a young age to even as I got older. You know, I, I had, um, again, I made unwise choices in relationships um, and non-relationships, you know? Unfortunately, when I was um, probably in my early teens, you know, um, I was molested by somebody in my family, uh, which really, it's, it's odd because I don't see myself as a victim per se, um, but I definitely know that that, that or those instances um, just kind of snowballed those relationships that I was having. You know, I had an unhealthy relationship with my younger brother. Um, I had unhealthy relationships with basically any men that was, that came into my life. It made it difficult when I had a relationship with my husband because there were a lot of things that I hadn't dealt with or I didn't want to deal with. Um, and I never really looked to Jesus um, or God in any of those instances. You know, I never said, why is this happening to me or why am I acting like this? You know, I knew almost uh, like I followed church law. You know, I went to um, a Catholic, Roman Catholic church and, you know, I followed the Ten Commandments and I was nice to people and I tried to honor my my mother and father, um, and I tried to make decisions based off of that, and that never really led to a good place. You know, I, I knew what the law was. Uh, sometimes I'd follow it and sometimes I didn't. Um, and those times that I didn't, I felt guilty about it, but I continued to do it. So probably about, um, Probably about a couple months after George and I got married on October 7th of 2017, uh, you know, we were trying to go to church or trying to find somewhere where we fit, um, but it didn't, it wasn't really super important in our lives. You know, I think that's kind of how I could describe how God fit into my life as a whole was I knew it was important, but it wasn't that important. Um, I didn't understand what a relationship with Jesus really meant. Um, so we were invited by uh, my Aunt Ruth. There was one point, probably a couple months into our marriage, where I started feeling like I really needed something. I didn't know what it was. I had a hole. I really felt like I was longing for something. I don't know if it was friendships. I, I didn't know what it was. And, um, you know, after that invitation, I said to my husband, let's just try it. You know, let's just go and, and see, um, you know, what it's like. I'd been there before. I've been coming to Skyline since I was 15, um, on and off with my cousin Anna. So um, it wasn't new to me, um, but I was nervous. I was nervous for my husband. Um, he also raised Roman Catholic all his life. He went to Catholic school. He was an altar server, you know, um, and he came and it's really funny. We joke because he 
the first thing that he said when he left was, wow, Leonard's amazing. <laughs> he said, and then, you know, we kept coming because he really loved the music. He loved the worship team. Um, and then he won the Cinnamon Roll Bake Off, <laughs> which of course was also judged by Leonard. <laughs> so um, that really kind of solidified us coming back. And, you know, we just got involved in ministry because, you know, Pastor Chris said it's important to be part of community and we wanted to be there to serve other people. We started learning what that really meant. Back in March of this year, um, I found out I was pregnant. Unfortunately, it didn't go as planned. And so in April, I had a miscarriage. Actually, it was probably more like May, but April 10th is when I remember the most because I had just come back from the doctor and the somebody in the staff told me that my blood results weren't where we wanted them to be. And I was really nervous. Um, I called my friend Justine, I was crying, I was really upset, um, and she fed me a lot of biblical truth. She showed me who Jesus was. And that was the day I remember I hung up the phone and I cried and I sobbed. And all I could say was, please help me. I said, you're in control. And that was the day I said, Jesus is my savior. I said, That's, that is the day that there was nothing that I could do anymore. Um, it was him. And, and that was the day I gave my heart to him. And I'm happy I gave my heart to him because, you know, things haven't been amazing, right? I mean, they've been amazing, but they haven't, they're, they're not out of this world extraordinary, but it feels really, really good to know that all of my brokenness, all of my sadness, all of that is, that's on his shoulders. You know, that's not for me to experience by myself anymore. Um, and, and so, you know, that's, been a really important part of, of me learning who Jesus is. I've learned to have a relationship with him. It's not just a God of laws, but um, you know, he sent his son and I've experienced grace more times than I can even begin to count um, in the last year, probably. I got baptized because, you know, as much, I don't, I can't say that I am a uh, biblical scholar, but I do know that baptism is is a, is a renewal, is, is a renewal for me, is to know um, that Jesus died on the cross for me, for my sins, for the sins of my family, for the sins of my future generations. Um, and I wanted to show the world that um, Jesus is still alive.